glad to have you with us in the studio. I'm Reese Davis, bringing you the EA Sports NCAA Football 14 pregame show presented by Nissan. Innovation that excites. In the Bluegrass State, you have to live with the result of this rivalry for an entire year. Kentucky and Louisville are on the field. The Wildcats and the Cardinals finishing up preparations for the battle for the Governor's Cup. That does it for us here on the NCAA College Football pregame show. Enjoy the game. We'll see you at the half. some exciting football action and I tell you what this is a heated in-state rivalry it's time for the coin toss now presented by Coke Zero real Coke taste zero calories enjoy everything Brooks we'll see how this game plays out as they get ready for the opening kickoff From the seven. He makes it to the 28-yard line. So here comes the offense taking the field for the first time today. The quarterback in the gun with five receivers. Got a man. Watch out here. They'll bring him down right around the 36-yard line. Wide. Runs left and can't get back to the line of scrimmage. Seven yard line. What a relief it is for a quarterback to know that he's got a receiver like this who can step up when he needs him on third down. Rifles at right. They can't connect. Incomplete. Thompson, the intended receiver on the play. That makes it second. And ten. Second down and ten to go. Ball on the forty-seven. Let's it go. And it's caught. And he's finally shoved out at the 23-yard line. I'd go right back to him. He's got the skills to make things happen, and the defense might not be able to keep up at this moment. Strike to his receiver. No good. The pass falls incomplete. Brooks was the intended receiver on the play. That makes it From the 23-yard line, second down. Gets it out to his receiver in a hurry, and they push him out at the 15. seven-yard line. When they broke the huddle, I'm sure everybody knew the ball was going to go to this receiver. And he still brought it in to give this team a big lift. Touchdown, Wildcats! Great 
quick looking touchdown. Once you get inside the 10 yard line, this halfback is automatic. And he converts the extra point. Let's check in with Reese Davis in the studio. The Sooners entered the game ranked seventh in the country, but under immense pressure to hold their lofty spot in the ranking. The Sooners light the scoreboard first with a rushing touchdown. Oklahoma has the edge, 7-0. That's good stuff, Reese. Thank you. The kicker looks like he's ready to kick this one off. Gathered in at the 6. He gets out to about the 28-yard line. Louisville's offense really centered around this quarterback, and as he goes, the team seems to go, Kirk. Brett, over the weeks, I've been watching him on film, and one thing I've seen is his ability to make good decisions. I mean, time after time, he just avoids the mistakes, and when you can do that as a quarterback and as a leader of an offense, you're going to move the football down the field. Gilmore takes a handoff, and he's taken down at about the 37-yard line. That'll make it second and inches. So it's second down, and they're only about a foot away from picking up the first down. And he's tackled around the 49-yard line. First down. stop around the 42 yard line so the quarterback completes the slant pattern that for about a nine yard gain on, it's second down and they're about two yards away from the sticks Hits him hard at the 41-yard line. Makes it out to maybe the 40-yard line. That makes it first and ten. We've got a first and ten. Ball on the 40-yard line. Tackle made at the 25. This quarterback definitely has some confidence in his arm, Kirk. It sure looks that way. That was well covered by the defense, and he still got it in there. First and ten. Ball on the 25. He's scrambling. That scramble gets them seven yards. This is the eighth play of this drive. Slings it out there incomplete. Accuracy is such a vital part of being a quarterback. You've got to have an ability to lay the ball right into your guys' hands. And once again, they'll come to the line and try to convert on third down. Boy, this guy really showed some giddy up getting down the field for a big game. That makes it first and And this is the 10th play of the drive. They'll work the left. Tackle at the 12. That's a great play by the defense. There's nothing like a defense being able to slip off of a block 
get into the backfield of the offense and then make a play in the backfield to be able to create some momentum possibly for this defense. From the 12-yard line, second down. And down he goes, right around the eight-yard line. That makes it 30 goal. Yet to go, but at the end of one, Kentucky's lead is a touchdown. Back to the action now here in the second quarter. Man left, man left. Down, down. Check nine, check nine. Back, back, back. End zone close to being intercepted. This just shows you that you don't need to be sacking the quarterback to disrupt the passing game. They'll line up for the field goal, and this is nothing more than a chip shot. Kicks up, and he's got it. Time for an update from the studio. Reese, what have you got? The Sooners arrived today, ranked number seven. Their steady climb in the polls, they hope, will continue today. Let's take a look at this one again. Here's a hotly contested battle. The Sooners are out front, 14-7. Well, there's some talk this week that we might see some upsets this week. I don't think you could ever expect that to happen, though. Everyone's all lined up and ready for the kickoff. Brooks takes it from the six. He makes it out to maybe the 30-yard line. Momentum swings have been fairly even. And with so little separation, this game can be drastically changed on just one or two plays. Kentucky holds a four-point lead. Throws incomplete. Sure, it's disappointing, but this is the kind of mechanical flaw you can fix with practice and coaching from their own 30-yard line. It's second down. Here's a handoff up the middle and no room to run. No game. That makes it third and 11. Roger, Roger. Mike two, Mike two. That's right, man. Check, check, light 80. We go, light, we go. And he almost has the INT. That brings us fourth and 11. Mason is waiting for the snap. It's away. Short punt. With one quarter down, I really haven't seen too much separation between these two squads. Might be neck and neck the whole way. And he is drilled at the 50. What a throw for a big game. That is a great example of the quarterback seeing the whole field and finding the guy who had the best chance of making a catch. Short yardage situation here. It's second down and one. Big time stop by the defense. You know, Brad, one of the things that all defensive coordinators always try to emphasize is their ability to stop offenses on third down. That is a big stop, and I think it could have a lot to do with the outcome of this football game. It's a short kick. In a game that's this close, you can't afford to waste possessions. Kentucky is up by four. Here we go. Come on. The cavalry's coming. He steps up. Well, the defense has to be very frustrated there. They did everything. They got to the quarterback. In fact, it looked like they had a chance to bring him down for the sack. But somehow he's able to throw the ball away. 
from their own 22-yard line. It's second down. These guys, especially in the secondary, really get after it and can make life hard for the play callers on the other side of the ball. Quickly to the tailback. They'll bring him down around the 28-yard line. Call it a gain of six yards. Fourth down. Bowers is back to receive. Bowers fields it at the 40, and down he goes at the 45-yard line. You know what? It might not have been a lot, but they moved the ball forward. Football's not a game won 100 yards at a time. You take what you can get. Momentum swings have been fairly even. And with so little separation, this game can be drastically changed on just one or two plays. Pass is tipped away. When you play the quarterback position, you have to be able to read the defense and look off defenders. He didn't really do that on that pass. He was lucky it was only a tip and not a pick. From their own 45-yard line, second down. He's got the corner. Gains his way to the 46-yard line. Call it a gain of nine yards. Third down. Gets out to around the 35. Nothing tentative on that run at all. He looked very determined and got the first down. First down, 10 yards to go. Ball on the 35-yard line. And they got him. Man, it's an offensive lineman. This is the worst thing that you want to see. Is your quarterback not only getting sacked, but getting hit like that? Those linemen better pick that quarterback up and start doing a better job of taking care of him. Throws complete, and he's hit right away. That brings up third and 12. Third down now, and they need to get it to the 25. Here's a quick throw. And he's level at the 13. And they pick up the first down with a pass to the tight end. It's easy to forget about the tight end sometimes coming off the line. But you always have to watch this guy because he's certainly capable of making big plays. There's a play fake. Fires quickly to the fullback. Brought down at the 10. Nothing going on that play. Well, here I think the quarterback needs to be a little bit more patient in the pocket. That way he can allow his receivers to get downfield a little bit before he throws it. And this play is number eight on the drive. Gets to about the eight-yard line. Going to the end zone. Touchdown for the tight end. Trying to go up by three. They'll kick the extra point. He splits the uprights with the extra point. Let's get an update now. Here's Reese Davis. Reese. The Sooners roll into today's game ranked number seven in the country. This is a game we've been watching closely all day long. A tight game. Two relentless fighters exchanging blows. Oklahoma has the edge 21-14. Well, it seems like every year we have one of those weekends where there's upset specials, and that one would be an upset. Allen is lined up to kick this one off. He's to the 20. Across the 30. Oh, man, did he take a hit. 
know we're getting so used to pinball football with a lot of points. Kind of fun to see defenses play this way. Kind of refreshing, isn't it? I mean, every single week we call games and you're seeing scores in the 30s and 40s. This is one of those low-scoring games. Which offense will get that big break? Eventually, it could be the team that wins it. In a game that's this close, you can't afford to waste possessions. He's out of bounds at the 36-yard line. From their own 36-yard line, second down. So an empty backfield with five wide receivers. Got it, but he's going to lose yards here. That brings up third and ten. Mason is the punter. Bauer fields it at the 34. He's tackled at the 43. The offense really came up with a nice drive there last time out, and most of those yards came through the air. This defense needs to improve from front to back. The line needs to put more pressure on the quarterback, and the defensive backs need to stick it to these receivers with tighter coverage. Going long. Well, you want to do everything you can to keep the ball out of the hands of these receivers, so that was a really good effort. From their own 43-yard line, second down. I guess he'll throw this one as far as he can and hope for a miracle. Once and all, going deep. Oh, boy, oh most intercepted points were very hard to come by in those first two quarters they'll head to the locker room 10-7 Cardinals we've played 30 minutes glad to have you with us on the EA Sports NCAA football 14 halftime show presented by Nissan innovation that excites David Pollock and I here in the studio to break down everything that just happened in your game. Defense has been dominant in this game. Yards very hard to come by. But David, as we get deeper and deeper into this game, the natural assumption is that the pressure goes to the offense to do something. No. How much pressure is on the defense not to make that catastrophic mistake? Well, that, that's, the, that's the conundrum you get in. I mean, it makes it exceptionally tough because you want to play perfect and you want to get them to punt every single time, but it's not the way it works and it's those big plays that you usually see that kill the defenses and break their backs and you can hold them great Reese on first down second down it's third and long you're in a perfect situation you give up that one play for 80 and it changes the whole complexion of the game so I think you got to have a little bit of both it can't just be great defense the whole time usually the teams that play great defense can keep you in it but only for so long at some point that offense has to get something going just about time to get you back out for the second half Brad and Kirk will be along in just a second you're looking forward to keeping an eye on everything around the country here. Got a good, you know, a good game score. We're locked and loaded. We got all the big screens going. You're going to be looking to hand out some helmet stickers later. Yeah. We're loaded, man. I'll try. You think you can keep on your shoes in the second half? I'll try to. They stinky? Yes. Brad and Kirk, you're at a safe distance. Take it away. All right, Reese and David, thanks, guys. Second half action just about ready to start here. From the center. He's out to the 30. Tries to get around the corner. Knocked out of bounds at the 47. Both squads are digging in now. Let's see what happens on this next drive. Louisville holds a field goal lead. Run play and he'll lose yards. And he was pretty much stuffed on that run. You know what? That was just a nice job by the defense in stopping him before he could get going and build up momentum. From their own 47-yard line, it's second down. And they make the stop at the 44. He airs 
it out. Incomplete. Nice job getting a hand on that one. Yeah, really good heads-up play there to get a hand on the football by the defense. McNair awaits the snap. Pruitt takes it at the 21, brought down at the 28-yard line. This deficit can be easily overcome, sure, but they have to be thinking if they don't get something going on this series, the burden is going to be felt by their defense. Nice run, and he's brought down. out to around the 48. Gets to about the 41 yard line. That brings up second and nine. And they get nice yardage on that run. Third down and five to go. Ball on the 37-yard line. Had his hands on it and dropped it. That was a nice play. Anything you can do without being penalized to prevent the offense from moving forward is always a plus. He's in trouble. I think they had to go for it given the circumstances. They just couldn't pull it off. A conversion there could have really helped them, but it just wasn't to be. Their last drive broke down and they punted. What do they have in store this time out? Louisville has a three-point lead. And he carries the ball for a nice game. That'll make it second and four. They're about four yards away here on second down. Got a man, watch out here. And he tackles him hard at the 47 yard line. First down. at the 48. I don't think the play developed the way it was supposed to, and the net result is a loss. Second down and 11. Ball on the 48-yard line. run up the gut. That's good for a game of seven yards. That'll bring up third and four. Double tight, double 
tackle for a loss. going to try to cough and corner this one. This punt goes over the goal line, and this will be a touchback. There's still plenty of time to keep running their offense as usual here. I don't think they need to feel any anxiety about trailing. Here's an opening. He's out to the 30. He goes out of bounds around the 37-yard line. And down he goes around the 39-yard line. So at the end of three, the Cardinals lead 10-7. into the fourth quarter now and we're back to the action watch two watch two coming set green in the eight quick throw and he's tackled right around the 44 yard line to his receiver. He's taken down at the 35. That brings in second and nine. Roger, Roger. Choose the mic. Let's pin the mirrors back and go full strength. Check it out. Right, 88 Weasel. Right, 98 Weasel. Tackle made at the 25-yard line. They're eating up a lot of field on this drive. I'm really impressed with their ball control. He's tackled around the 16-yard line. Incomplete, trying to get it to his receiver. That's a miscommunication between a quarterback and a wide receiver right there. They need to get their signal straight. Here's the eighth play of the series. Huge play, and it's going to be first and goal. It's a great job here by the quarterback of recognizing the outside linebacker blitz and delivering the football for a first down. Tight end, but it falls to the ground. That brings him second and goal. It's second and goal. Six yards to the end zone. The sub package in there defensively in this five wide receiver set. Caught open field, and he's taken down at the one yard line. Quarterback in the gun with five receivers. Touchdown, and that gives them the lead. And a nice catch by the receiver for the touchdown. Anytime you're near the red zone, you got to keep an eye for this guy. They love going to him down here. converts the extra point. Reese Davis is standing by with this update. Reese. The Bulldogs come into today's game ranked number nine in the country. Check out these two teams keeping it close. Georgia's on top, 21-14.
We're at 14 to 10 in this one, Reese. They line up to kick this one away. It's fielded at the two. They'll bring him down at the 23-yard line. Boy, this has been a fun game to watch, going back and forth and back and forth. It's almost like watching a tennis match here. Whoever has the ball last, my guess, will be the team that wins it. This is a pretty crucial series right here. With things being so tight, your best players have to step it up on both sides of the ball. Gilmore takes it up the middle. Runs it left for a decent game. That'll bring up second and three. They need about three yards to get the first here on second down. What a throw for a big game. That is a great example of the quarterback seeing the whole field and finding the guy who had the best chance of making a catch. Just under three to go in regulation. There's a strike complete, and he's down. That'll make it second and four. So it's second down now, and they need about four yards to pick up the first. Scrambling around, and they got him. This quarterback has to do a better job of avoiding the rush because sacks can be real drive killers. So it's fourth down, and the offense is still on the field. Oh, and a huge drop by the wide out here in the fourth quarter. It's always a gamble going for it with so many yards to come up with. But when you're behind, sometimes you have to take risks to get back into a ball game. Both teams realize that when the ball is snapped, we're one play away from a very different ball game. Brought down after a nice run up the middle. Mathis picks up about four yards on the play. Louisville's going to take their first time out of the half. Second and six coming up here. Ball on the 39. down at the 40-yard line. Boy, did you see how the defense just swarmed to the ball carrier? That was fantastic pursuit. Less than two minutes in the fourth quarter. Fires out to his wideout. They'll bring him down at about the 33-yard line. Louisville will use their final timeout from the 33-yard line. First down. He gets out to about the 32-yard line. Call it a gain of one yard. That brings up second and nine. Man left, man left. Three down, three down. Mike two, Mike two. Three nine. He fights forward to about the 30. Well, a lot of frustration by that offense, but you've got to give the defense credit for coming up with a stop in this quarter in a game this close. It's fourth down, and they're going to try to go for it. Short yardage situation, and the offense is in the jumbo package. Well, 
Well, just amazing. A stop that they absolutely had to have to give it back to their offense and have a chance to win, and they got it. This is what you dream about, situations like this. You've got the football, you're behind, but if you take the lead, it could mean a win. So this is it right here. One last play and one last chance to win the game. If they can get the Hail Mary, they'll pull out the miracle win. He's going to air it long. No, incomplete. And so that's going to do it. The Wildcats just win it. 14-10. So what are your final thoughts on this one, Kirk? They've talked about the rivalry all week long, and for good reason. We saw the intensity down on the field every play, and it showed us why these teams love to hate each other. It'll be interesting to see how this game carries over the next time they play. That brings this broadcast to a close. For EA Sports and Kirk Herb Street, I'm Brad Nessler. We'll see you soon for another edition of NCAA Football 14.